I am the ultra healthy video game nerd. It's good to see you all again. People who are following me on other social media like Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook probably realized that recently I went to the Tokyo Game Music Show. Now what this is, it's similar to Comic Market, basically but for game musicians. So they all have their own booths and they bring their music CDs and their other recent merchandise to sell and then you can, you know, talk to them directly. This was the first time I've ever gone. Uh, I never knew about all these kinds of events or anything until I started using Twitter, basically, and that was only a year ago. So I will admit, getting into social media has had benefits. Uh, so I did finally get to go this year, and that was great because there were some really amazing people there. Uh, Kikuta Hiroki, for example, who wrote the music to Secret of Mana was there. Um, Naruke Michiko, who writes the music to Wild Arms was there. There are a lot of really uh, classic, you know, legendary game musicians who are there. A lot of people who have been doing it for ages since I was a little kid. So it was extremely exciting to get to go to be there. Uh, and I did pick up a number of CDs uh, from some of my favorite musicians. So in this episode, I want to introduce what I bought at the Tokyo Game Music Show. I didn't really take any pictures there. Sorry, uh, it's just I'm not a picture taking kind of guy. I feel like it gets in the way of my experience of just being in the moment. So I don't have any pictures of me standing together with these people, unfortunately. But I did get some really awesome CDs, so let's take a look at those. So first, let me show you what I got from Naruke Michiko. This is the soundtrack to a game called Zombie Tokyo. This is an app game, and of all things, she did this music together with Iwadari Noriyuki. Yeah, they actually collaborated for this soundtrack. Uh, it's 12 tracks, it's about 25 minutes. You know, it's an app game, so you can't have that much music in there probably. Uh, but it's, it's actually really nice. The game itself kind of is, you know, pixel art throwback style. And the music is appropriately sort of 16-bit sounding. And it's, it's really clean. Obviously, it's two legendary composers working on it. It's really, really nice music. Uh, so I am glad I picked this up. And she was also passing out uh, postcards, sort of promotional things, for her new CD that's sort of original music. This one is basically the Wild Arms vocal collection, but she's been putting out these CDs called Milestone that have her own personal music on them, and she signed them, so this one says, To Chris. That's pretty cool. Next, I also bought a CD from the legendary Shioda Nobuyuki. So if you don't know Shioda no Nobuyuki, uh, he did a lot of music for a company called KID, K-I-D, uh, who rarely published their own games, so a lot of people wouldn't have known their name, but they did some very famous games in the 8-bit era. They made Logi Man, uh, Kickmaster, both G.I. Joe games, Isolated Warrior, uh, the game Summer Carnival 92, Rekka that didn't come out in America and is kind of like one of the most expensive Japanese Famicom games. He did all of that. Uh, so he was there. He was the first person whose booth I went to, actually. I'm like, kind of really, you know, I, I love his music. So he was just selling some of his personal CDs. So I just picked this up. The, the sign literally said, uh, the CDs I made yesterday. <laughs> so uh, it's just his own original music. There's like three tracks on here, I think three or four. And it's, it's, um, it's synth music, but it's kind of piano heavy. It's not video game music, you know, but it's, it's interesting to have, so. Got that. Uh, next, this is a, a crazy one. So, to be completely honest, I don't even know how to read the kanji of these necessarily. Uh, this is from Beta Flash. Uh, now, Beta Flash, if you've never heard of this, is a group produced by Tamayo Kawamoto. Now, Tamayo Kawamoto was probably my favorite musician there. Uh, she worked with Capcom very early on. Uh, she wrote the music to things like Forgotten Worlds, uh, and then she, eventually she switched over to Taito, and then she wrote the music for the Ray series, the Ray Storm, Ray Force, and Ray Crisis. Um, and I absolutely love her old music. Now, she currently writes music for vocal tracks, basically, and, and there's a girl who sings with her. So their unit is called Beta Flash. Uh, so they were there together. And I picked up one CD from them. It has three tracks on it. It's called Kotodama no Sachi wa Fukoku, or maybe Fuguni, or something like that. Um, this one's kind of weird. So I was listening to them, and I was trying to lead, read along with the lyrics. And it's written like in traditional, like classical Japanese. It's really like ancient poetry, kind of like I can hardly understand any of it, literally. And I've been living here, you know, I can read Japanese perfectly fine. 
um, it's I, I could barely understand a thing. Uh, so obviously she, she has some poetry skills. Uh, and the title I'm actually not completely sure of either. <laughs> but it, it's really interesting, you know, to hear her current music, you know, to hear what she could do, you know, without the confines of video game music. And the, the third track actually has some similarity to, to some of the music in Rayforce, actually. So you can still hear, you know, little hints of her old style. So um, I will admit I made a fool of myself only once at this place and unfortunately it was at the person whose music I probably like the most. It was with Tamayo Kawamoto. People will take their own game or a game music CD to get signed by the people there sometimes. So I took the booklet to the soundtrack of Strider. I always thought that Tamayo Kawamoto had done the music to Strider. Now when I got up there and I you know was talking to her I was you know just like you know it's kind of nervous you know because I you know just respect her so much. And uh, I said, you know, if, if it's okay, uh, instead of on this CD, I'd like to have you signed my booklet for the Strider soundtrack. And she says, well, that's okay, fine, but I didn't write the music to that. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, that threw me off. Uh, apparently she didn't write the music to Strider. I didn't know that. I always thought she wrote the music to Strider. Uh, somebody else said Tamiya Junko, maybe? Uh, now, I love all her other music. I know for a fact she did. Uh, you know, Forgotten Worlds, Ghouls and Ghosts, and all these other things. I still love her music, but <laughs> it's just kind of, you know, it's, it's sort of an insulting thing to do. Uh, so I really felt like a fool. But it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a great day if I didn't make an idiot of myself at least once. So next, this is a peculiar one. This is a live album of Hayama Koji. Now, if you don't know Hayama Koji, he wrote the music to Cho Aniki which I often call the gay shooters for the PC Engine CD, or he did the first one. Um, so he's a bit of a legend in game music, but the thing is, he's not specifically a game music composer. He's just kind of a rock and roller. Uh, if you look up pictures of him online, he's always wearing a bandana and leather, kind of, and I've always seen him like that. So he was there, actually, and he was selling some stuff, and uh, one of the things he was selling that, that he just kind of suggested to me was this a live CD. I think it might be a compilation of tracks from various live performances, mostly of music from the Cho Aniki games. And I've got to tell you, it's surprising how well that music lends itself to a live performance of rock and roll. Uh, it's weird. I don't know how to explain it, but this might be the most pleasant surprise of anything I bought. Uh, there's a lot of music on this one also. Um, you know, it's it's just metal, I guess, or, you know, just, just low, heavy, hard rock. Um, but it's, it's some of them do have those kind of weird voices that come from the Chuaniki games. If you played them, you know what I'm talking about. And yeah, I don't know, it's totally weird. And I, I do have to tell you one thing. All the pictures of him online kind of look like mid-30s, maybe 40-ish. This man is old. This man is getting up there. He's like old, old, like your grandpa old. Um, but uh, it was really, really cool seeing him. And I've got the signature to me on there on the back, if you can see that. So this is really nice. Next, this is the soundtrack to a doujin computer game called Dot no Ken. Maybe Dot no Kobushi, probably Dot no Ken Giga. Uh, and this is a fighting game done almost in 8-bit style. Like, the graphics are very rough. And the music is by... Nakagata Norio. Now, this is another legend of game music. Uh, he wrote the music to things like Bravo Man, uh, Genpei Toma Den, which might have been called Samurai Ghost in America, the Turbo Graphics version. Uh, he did about half of Zombie Nation on the NES. Uh, this is a major guy. He's been there for a really long time. Uh, so he was there also, and I got to talk to him for a little bit. And this, he did the soundtrack completely for this one. Uh, it's, it is, you know, a fighting game for the PC. It's probably not something I would really play, uh, but the musical style is not so different from Genpei Tomaden. It's like, you know, Japanesque, but there's a rock uh, side to it also together. So these are really nice. Like, melodically, you can totally hear the style. It's like, it's very similar. There's similarities you can hear with some things from Bravo Man or um, Tenjin Kaisen from the Game Boy that he did also. Uh, so these are really cool, and I found out something really interesting when I went, which is that when I was talking to Shiro, Shiro Nobuyuki, uh, who had worked at KID, he told me that 
Nakagata Norio also had worked with Kit and they had some, done some of the music together and basically uh, this guy Nakagata had taught Shioda everything he knows about writing music, writing, you know, electronic music, you know, game music. Uh, and, and I had absolutely no idea that that was the case. So that was a really interesting piece of game history that I got to learn from being there. Uh, also, I did get a CD from Gameadelic. They were selling, they were calling this the, the official pirate version, basically. So I'm guessing that this is probably a sampler. Uh, from the next album that they're working on. This has four tracks on it, and we know that Gameadelic is working on yet another studio album of, you know, arranges to older game songs, because a few months back they took a poll on Twitter about what games we want to hear music done by Gameadelic for the next one. Uh, so I suggested actually uh, something from the TurboGrafx version of Bloody Wolf. So they've never done that. That's Data East. It's just not, you know, it's, it is an arcade game, but the music for the Turbo Graphics version was completely different. So we'll see if that, get pick, that, if that gets picked up or not. But I did get this CD. It has four songs on it. Um, something from Fighting Fantasy, Darwin, 4078, which they did on the reboot album, uh, Braywood, and supposedly Windjammers 2. Uh, something because we know that there is a sequel finally coming out to Windjammers and they may or may not be involved with the soundtrack. We're not completely sure, uh, but that's very cool. And the last thing that I picked up there is, of course, Blind Spot 3. This really is probably the most polished thing uh, that I bought at the Tokyo Game Music Show. This is the one that I knew I wanted. Uh, in case you haven't been following it, this is basically Sega's band, SST Band and they've sort of come back together under the guidance of um, Namiki Koichi and they're calling themselves Blind Spot now. They can't use the SST name really because it belongs to Sega and they're not really associated with Sega anymore so they're using the name Blind Spot which was the name of their first original album. And last year they put out a new studio album for the first time in, you know, 25 years or more or something like that. They've been selling it at the concerts mostly, although it'll go up on Amazon eventually. So they just finished Blind Spot 3, yet another new studio album. And again, it has some covers of, you know, older Sega songs and a few of their original compositions as well. Uh, so this one has a song from Radmobile, uh, Galaxy Force, again, done in Bossa Nova style, which works really well actually with that song. One from Game Ground, and this one shocked me. Of all things, they chose the final level music, which seems like it would be the worst for a band to play, but it works out pretty well. Uh, one from SDI, and the last one is Sakura Tyson 3. Uh, they did a vocal track from Sakura Tyson 3, which is interesting, but the original songs are really well done too. Uh, you know, this is 10 tracks, this is, you know, a full length album, uh, and it's, it's excellent. I mean, to be honest, I haven't even really made a solid opinion of Blind Spot 2 yet, and now I've got three, so got all this stuff, very happy about that. So that's everything that I bought at the Tokyo Game Music Show. Uh, but there is a sort of interesting little episode I'd like to tell you guys about. So when you first go into this thing, you know, there are usually lines of people waiting, you know, to go up to the composer, you know, and buy something from them or, you know, talk to them for a little bit. So at first, you know, you gotta wait uh, for the, the more famous people. Zuntada had the longest line, I remember. Uh, but really, after maybe an hour or an hour and a half and, and people have bought what they wanted, it, it just clears up and the, the composers are just waiting around, kind of. You can just go up and talk to them, have a chat if you'd like. So I got a chance to speak with Naruke Michiko a little bit. Now this is like a dream come true. For me, you know what I'm saying. Uh, it, it was a really big deal. So we got to talk for a little bit. I actually took the instruction booklet of Tenshi no Uta from the PC Engine for her to sign uh, instead of whatever it is that she was selling then, because I had no idea uh, what kind of music would be there at the time. So I took that there for her to sign, and um, I think she was really happy to see that. Uh, she, she, you know, was rather surprised, you know, that I knew about Tenshi no Uta. I mean. I don't think it's like that obscure. I mean, if you like her music, I would imagine most people know that that was kind of some of the first stuff she did. But 
judging by her reaction, I didn't get the impression that a whole lot of people bring it up. Or I, I think it was really surprising for her, in a good way. So it was kind of cool, so we got to talk about that for a little bit. Uh, and I, I mentioned that, really to be honest, probably my favorite music she had written was for Psycho Dream, for the Super Nintendo. You know, I, it's kind of valuable, so I didn't want to get that one signed. I definitely don't think very many people bring that up with her, because she was like really surprised in a good way, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, she talked to me about it. She like remembered the individual songs and stuff like that. So it was a really amazing experience for me. And I actually did just kind of ask in passing like, oh, did you ever get to meet Nishizaki Marino during the planning stage? Um, because he was the person who wrote the artwork for Psycho Dream. I did a video about it uh, and he passed away uh, just before I came to Japan. And she was like, oh, you know, the artist, like, yeah, yeah, I did. And she also knew about him, you know, that, that he had died kind of later. Um, and it, it's, you know, it would just be such a long conversation that, you know, I kind of couldn't get further and it would just go on and on and on. Um, but she knew about all that stuff, you know, she had been there. So it was amazing for me because it was the first time I had ever met anybody who was involved with Telenet. Uh, and you guys know how much I love them. So it was really cool uh, to be able to just like, you know, have a conversation with these people who I respect so much. Uh, and that was probably the best thing about the event at the end of it. Uh, so that is all for this episode. I just wanted to show you guys what I got at the Tokyo Game Music Show. And if you're planning a trip to Japan, I would definitely recommend um, aligning it with the Tokyo Game Music Show next year. I believe they do always happen towards the end of February because it's an amazing experience. I mean, these are people who have been involved in video game music for 20 years or more, you know, sometimes. I mean, Tamayo Kawamoto, I think more than 30. So, if you get the chance to do it, definitely uh, come to Japan and I can, you know, help you get a ticket if you need. Uh, so that's all for this episode. Thanks a lot for checking it out. I will see you next time.